face. Let me stop the jiggling part of the video. Nobody wants to see that. Avert your eyes, kids. <laughs> All right. So when it comes to the world of differential equations, boy, it goes away. <laughs> you got, for those of you that are going to engineering, you're going to take an entire course on differential equations. And you're going to discover that really it is all about can I solve a derivative equation? That's it. That's the whole course. You get all these different equations, derivative equations that you have to solve. And the key often is classifying the problem, being able to identify the kind of differential equation it is. If you know what kind it is, it tells you there's a different method. For my friends in the room that are always like, can you tell me a process that I'm going to follow for the next like 10 problems, Jenea? Mm -hmm. And to others, you know who you are, you're like, just tell me the steps. The steps are coming. Mm -hmm. The topic that we're going to focus on for the next couple of days is separable differential equations or separable diffiqs. A differential equation is separable if I can write it as a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. That's the clue. If I ask if it's a separable differential equation, your question is really going to be, you're going to answer that based on, can I write it in this way? With the y's and the dy's on one side, the x's and the dx's on the other. Once you know that it's separable, there's a process that we're going to go through. So I want to start with a relatively easy question, and so you guys can like see it. We'll kick the tires a little bit, ask all the right questions. Okay, is everybody okay that first of all this is a differential equation? Right, derivative stuff is in here. We've got the dy, we've got the dx. If this is a separable differential equation, then using legal math, you can get a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx. And the easy way to make that happen on this one, really easy way, Sama, what do you say? Uh, add x dx to x. Is that legal? Yes. Right, just y times dy equals x times dx. I'm not saying that that means problem's done, but if I have a function of y times dy equals a function of x times dx, then I know it's a separable differential equation. And here's where the steps come. Step one, integrate both sides. Okay? Integrate y with respect to y. Integrate x with respect to x. Integral of x with respect to x, everybody knows this. Integral of x with respect to x. One half. One half x squared. One half x squared. Uh oh. Times. How about plus our friend Charlie, right? Integrate the right. What about the left? Integral of y dy. One half y squared. One half y squared. Also. Times dy. Plus not times dy. The integral of y is just one half y squared. Plus Charlie. Are we okay? Okay, now here's the thing. If you call this C over here and you call this C over here, you're going to fall into the trap and you're going to think that these are the same. But what I know about C is that it's a constant. It could be any constant, right? It's our constant of integration. It could be different than this C over here. So I'm going to call it C sub 1 and C sub 2. So first Charlie, second Charlie. They're both constants. We don't know either constant right now. The little sub one and the sub two just tells me that they're different. Why, hello, all the friends have a seat. I'll sell you some cookies in just a minute. But not until I finish closing the achievement gap. All right, friends over here, we're okay? We identified it as a separable differential equation. We integrated both sides. Three wonderful calculus ladies just walked in. We're solving separable differential equations. Such a good thing. You've separated the variables. You've integrated both sides. The next step? <laughs> Losers. Okay. okay. You're going to solve the new equation for y. Legal stuff only. 
legal stuff only. Solve for y. I want you to get y by itself. Couldn't get easier than this. Subtract c1. Is that legal? Yeah. Okay. One half y squared equals a half x squared plus c2 minus c1. You, the three of you, will remember this. I know. C2 is a constant that you don't know. C1 is a constant that you don't know. A constant that you don't know minus a constant that you don't know. Guess what? It's a constant that you don't know. What do we call the constant that you don't know? Super Charlie. Super Charlie. Super Charlie. Super Charlie. No, you do not actually have to do this. But you'll, people will know that you were raised at Southwest if you... In, you bring on Super Charlie here. Constant that I don't know minus a constant that I don't know is a constant that I don't know. But wait, I'm going to keep blowing your mind, Jasmine. One half y squared equals a half x squared plus c. My goal is to solve for y. Haven't done it yet. What are we going to do? We're going to multiply everything by 2. Okay, multiply everything by 2. 2 times a half y squared, y squared. 2 times a half x squared, x squared. 2 times Charlie. Charlie. Is 2 Charlie, but wait. Constant that I don't know. 2 times a constant that I don't know. Guess what? Super duper Charlie. Super duper Charlie. It's another <laughs> Super Charlie. So y squared equals x squared plus c. Sama. What happened to the 2 and the 1 by the c? Okay. c2 was a constant that I didn't know. c1 is a constant that I don't know. When I subtract them, it's still a constant that I don't know. Also, it's just because it's only one C, you don't put a number Right. Everybody's still okay? The goal is to solve this equation for y. You're like five seconds away. If y squared equals x squared plus c, how are we going to solve it? Square root. But now do it the right way. If you're going to take the square root, you've got to consider both the positive and the negative versions. So we identified the separable differential equation. We integrated. We solved for y. The last thing is use the initial condition if you have one. Do we have an initial condition? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now that I've got an, this initial condition, the initial condition says that if x is equal to 1, then y has to be equal to negative 3. So plug them in. Negative 3 is plus or minus the square root of 1 squared plus c. So negative 3 is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus c. I want to solve it for c. What's the just right value for c to make this work? Some of you, like maybe you just know it, you look at it, and you know that the answer is a mystery. If you don't know what C is, then use the algebra skills again. Like, square both sides. So 9 plus or minus square root of 1 plus C. If I square that, I get 1 plus C. So C is going to be 8. Your final answer is going to be Y equals plus or minus the square root of X squared plus 8. And as much as I like that, the one rule when it comes to differential equations is your answer has to be a function. It has to be a function that passes through your initial condition. And I have a choice here. I could use y equals plus the square root of x squared plus 8 or the negative version of the square root of x squared plus 8. Negative. Yeah. Why would you go with the negative? Because like, when we have the initial condition, yep. if, if it was a positive, it would turn out to be negative 3 is equal to 3. Which right. Is right. Because the initial condition has a negative y value, we're going to have to go with the negative version. So your final answer is going to be this guy right here. For those of you that are hungry, not just for cookies, <laughs> but hungry for a process, separable differential equations is going to be the thing. But the first thing I need to see is, is your, is your differential equation separable? If it is, integrate both sides. Once you integrate both sides, we're going to solve it for y. Use the initial condition. Do the happy dance. 
Brianna. Possibly. Good question. Okay, here's what I want you guys to try. Try problem number two. See what you can do. But first, you have to convince me that it's separable. Let's get you your cookies. function of y times dy equals a function of x dx. If you can do that in a legal way, then it's separable. Can you use the butterfly method? Can you cross multiply? Yes. 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 It is absolutely a trick question, Brianna. Why is it a trick question? Did you do it? It is the same thing that we just did. So it doesn't look the same at first, but once you do the algebra, right, once you cross multiply, you immediately wind up at y dy equals x dx. Integrate both sides, go from there. Everybody good? Yeah. Good. All right, let's upgrade the skills then. Oh. <laughs> Wrong. Yay. Wrong. Yay, that's right. Reboot. Reboot. There you go. That's why I'm getting the gray braids too. Jaylene? Yes. All right, so now let's upgrade the skills. I will tell you, over when you take differential equations, you are going to learn a whole slew of different techniques for solving differential equations. And depending on the kind of equation it is, that's going to tell you the process to follow. So with this first question, my question to you all is, is it separable? And it's not just going to be yes or no. I need to see it. Can you separate the variables legally without doing the illegal algebra? If you can, make it happen. 
Curious, how many guys are convinced it's separable? Meaning you separated it. Alejandro, what'd you do? Uh, I converted the one over negative one over x cube. Uh huh. X to negative cube. Oh, so you made it negative like x to the negative three? Okay, that wouldn't convince me that it's separable yet. Fabricio, what would you do? Uh, I add one over x. Okay, is that legal? Yes. Right, I'm, you, I'm just going to bombard you with that question again and again. Is that legal? Yes, Abel, what would you do now to convince me that this is separable? Uh, you can multiply by dx. Okay, and why are you going to do that? What's your strategy? Mark? Because if you can get dx on one side, yep. then you can have dy on the other side. Okay, so when I multiply by dx, I'm going to get y dy equals 1 over x cubed dx. Are we okay? Is this separable? Yes. Yeah. Okay, if this is the AP exam free response, there comes your first point because you separated the variables. Your next move, you've separated the variables, what's next? You're gonna integrate both sides. Usually, Alejandro, can you look a little less comfortable? Okay. Usually, one of the two sides is easier. My recommendation, attack that one first. Which one's easier? Probably the one on the left, right? The integral of y dy? One half, one half. One half y squared plus Charlie. Hey, good news. You integrated successfully, you get a point. Right, whenever you find an antiderivative plus Charlie. The integral on the right is going to require some special love in here. Who's got it for me? How are you going to integrate 1 over x cubed? Melissa, what are your thoughts here? Okay, so first of all, you're rewriting as x to the negative third, right? Okay, what's the antiderivative, Melissa, for x to the negative third? One over negative two. Right? Add one of the power, divide by the new power. Plus c. On this side, a half y squared plus c. You get another point when you integrate the other side. And if you remember the constant of integration, you get another point. You've just done one, two, three, picked up four points <coughs> for doing a little bit of algebra, a little bit of calculus. I mean. And we forget to label like c1, c2. And even better, let's say you forget to label the c1 and the c2. What are you going to do anyway? You're going to combine them onto one side, right? And then what? You make it into like Super Charlie? It is legal. Claudia, make sure you hear this. Why are you whispering? Because it's a secret. Just write it on one side. Oh my god. Because you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. If you write the constant of integration over here, what's your next move? How about subtract it to the other side, and then? <laughs> then you're like, Super Charlie. So if that's going to happen, why bother writing two of them in the first place? Because you want to draw a Super Charlie. Don't worry, it's still coming. I might clean this up a little bit, so I've got a half y squared, 1 over negative 2, that just feels wrong, so I'm going to make it negative a half. x to the negative 2, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to make it 1 over x squared plus super charlie the goal what are we trying to do get y by itself you want to get y by itself legal algebra here multiply everything by two two times a half y squared y squared two times negative one half negative one over x squared plus two times c super charlie there you go 
Super Charlie. So y squared equals negative 1 over x squared plus Charlie. Not done yet. We're close though. Gosh, we're close. What's the next thing? Okay, we're going to say y equals plus or minus. Salma, were you going to say take the square root? Oh, you wanted to plug in the initial condition? That works. Brianna? And somewhere along the lines, you've learned that we can't take the square root of a negative number. Having a negative sign underneath the radical is not the problem. Depending on the value of c, depending on what you plug in for x, if this number is a negative number, that would be the problem. The negative sign itself is not the problem. We go. Are we ever going to deal with i? Are you ever going to deal with i in like calc three? Yes. So not Able. Here. So for you know, when it looks, so whenever we have a negative inside, it's just like that. It's just okay, but it just depends on what Charlie is. I, Bri Brianna's point is this: if we said y is the square root of negative twelve, Miguel, this ties back to what you were just thinking. Square root of negative twelve is a complex number. It is imaginary. You'd say something like i times the square root of 12. We don't deal with the negatives in <coughs> calculus, like negative underneath the radical. But if I said, hey, y is the square root of x squared minus 4, having a subtraction sign or having a negative sign, there's not a problem. It'll depend on what the x values are. Okay, let's finish this off. So y is plus or minus the square root of negative a half, negative 1 over x squared plus c. I'm not done because I have an initial condition, right? I know I've got one. And now the question is, well, what's the right value of c? So we're going to plug it in. Let x equal a half, and y has to be negative 6. Negative 6 is plus or minus the square root of negative 1 over a half squared plus c. We've got some ugly math coming. 1 half squared one is a fourth. 1 divided by a fourth four. is 4. Negative of that? Negative 4. So negative 6 is plus or minus the square root of negative 4 plus c. I want to get to c. So, square it, square it, 36 plus or minus square root negative 4 plus c when I square it. I just get negative 4 plus c, add 4 to both sides, I think c is equal to 40. Okay, so you're going to go back and say, all right, I'm almost done. y equals plus or minus square root negative 1 over x squared plus 40. Like it, don't love it. Janaya, why negative? Negative because if for the one half it's negative, it'll be positive when it comes out, so it needs to be negative. When you plug in x equals a half, you need to get the negative 6 out as the final answer. That only happens if you select the negative branch of this. Seriously, this is separable differential equations. Separate the variables, integrate both sides, Solve the equation for y, use the initial condition. Done. That's all I got. That's all I got for you. So with that, why don't you guys try number three on the partner practice? Oh, that's a good one. Okay. As long as what can we do? it's still going to be constant, that's <laughs> So if I said, take the square root of C, so what if I said the E to the C power? E to the C is still right? So we, what would you subtract? Yeah. Yeah. Would you? <coughs> 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 <coughs>
Are you subtracting the so cloud and the building? We're going to spend the next two or three days here. Is this the process? There's going to be the problems are long because there's a lot of algebra that you got to do. Separate the variables, create both sides, solve for y, use the initial condition, and there's almost always, almost always, one of these on the AP exam. So this is one of these can be a really high score. I want to be convinced that this thing is separable. Is that legal? Is it legal to multiply both sides by y? Yes, keep going. No, yeah, we can move this over here. Okay, but my first question is, is this separable? Can you get the y's and the dy's on one side, the x's and the z's on the other side? Okay, then you know it's separable. First one. You did it? You don't have to write the right one. Which is the same as this, right? But the fact that you can do that is what is important. Is then that it goes out to solve it. Yeah. The right one is the way out. Last one, the problem on the front end dictates how you use this one when you let it on this too. Oh, it's separable. Boom, I know what to do. Then there's like integration factors and all sorts of other fun stuff. But knowing that it's separable is the I think I'm probably very fine. So if you multiply by y, you get on both sides. No, it'll be negative cos of x times y times y. Y times y. Cosine or the cosecant only works on whatever comes right after it. Okay? Because if I wanted to say cosecant of x to y, I would have to use the vertices. Alright, just quick, quick show of hands. How many of you guys made it here with separating? dx over negative cosecant of x equals y dy. If you made it there, good news, you had just picked up the first point. And you now know that it's a separable differential equation. If you know that it's a separable differential equation, you know exactly what the next thing to do is. Integral. Integra integrate both sides. And almost always, almost always, one side is easier than the other. Is it the same one? Which one's easier on this side, on this one? I think the right side is a little easier to integrate. So the integral of y dy is 1 half y squared plus Charlie, you just picked up a second point and the third point. 
the work, the inspiration comes over here. I need some trickery. dx divided by negative cosecant of x. This is not one that is anywhere up on this poster that I'm blocking. Melissa, what are your clever thoughts here? Uh, well, what you said was that that's the same thing as saying negative one over cosecant of x dx. Okay, all right, I, I, I got you. Negative 1 over cosecant of x dx, and why is that helpful? Uh, because it's separate, so now you can just... But negative 1 over cosecant, that was the thing I was, I hoped you were picking up on. I, I oh, you weren't finished. What were you going to say? So then, um, <laughs> we know that cosecant is 1 over cosine. Okay, cosecant is 1 over cosine? I don't think we know that, no. Uh, 1 over sine? It's 1 over the sine of x. So that's like my little thought bubble here. So I've got the integral of negative 1 over 1 over sine of x dx. Okay, Melissa, finish it off. Uh, so then that's, um, that's integral of negative sine of x. Right, negative 1 divided by 1 over sine of x, a little keep it, change it, flip it. So negative sine of x dx is equal to half y squared plus c. You should pretty much always expect I'm going to make one of the sides messy to work with. And one of the sides not too bad. Antiderivative of negative sine of x, everyone can tell me. So we've got cosine of x, write the plus c if you want to, but I'm not too interested in that. Cosine of x equals a half y squared plus c. Now, the next thing that you guys are probably tempted to do right now, solve it for y, use the initial condition. Brianna asked a question earlier. What happens if you use the initial condition first? Right? That, that was your question. Like, what if after you found the antiderivative, what if you plugged in? Let's try it. So we're going to call this like use the initial condition early. So use the initial condition early. We know that if x equals pi over 2, y is equal to 4. So cosine of pi over 2 is equal to a half 4 squared plus c. Cosine of pi over 2. 0. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Half of 4 squared is going to be 8 plus c. So c is equal to negative 8. You're not done, because that just means that c is negative 8. So cosine of x is equal to a half y squared minus 8. Your goal is to solve it for y. So add 8 to both sides. Cosine of x plus 8 equals a half y squared. Double both sides. 2 cosine of x plus 16 equals y squared. Take that square root, and remember to use the plus or the minus. Everybody okay? All the friends in a good place? Okay. Don't call that your final answer, though. Why not, why not, why not, why not, why not, why not? Why is that not going to be your final answer? Abel, why is it not going to be your final answer? No, you have to decide whether it's going to be positive or negative. Right, this is something specifically that comes up when you're dealing with this choice between is it the positive or is it the negative? Which one? Uh, positive. And the reason, the way that you decide the positive, you look at the initial condition. So Y in this case is going to be the positive version. Perfect. Some folks like after they find the uh, once they've integrated both sides, they like using the initial condition early. That's great. As soon as you use the initial condition, you get a point. Once you solve the equation for y, you get the next point. It's all good. We go. So you decide positive or negative if the y, whatever the y, if the y is negative, then it's going to be negative. If the y is positive, it's going to be negative. Yes. All the time. The initial condition is going to determine whether I want the positive version or the negative version. Brown. Right, you're not always going to have a square root as like the answer, but when you do have this situation of it could be the positive or it could be the negative, 
That's when I pick the I look at the initial condition. All the friends okay? Able. So using the er the initial condition early is, is it, it's okay to do because it won't mess you up. It's kind of like yeah. checking areas of like that. It is I don't know about that. But once you've cleared like everything above this line, you got like this is all the calculus stuff that we have to do. Right, you're integrating your plane around with the constant. Once you get to the algebra, you can solve the equation for y first, then use the initial condition, or use the initial condition, then solve for y. I usually go through and solve the problem for y first, then use the initial condition. It doesn't have to be that way. Everybody good? We're going to spend a couple of days here. We're going to look at application problems. It's going to be fun stuff. So what I want you guys to do, especially with you guys, I want you to get a little bit of time to start on the homework. Tonight's homework is to do all five problems on the final page. Skip the page with the panda bear on it. That's for tomorrow. We'll play around with panda bears to, uh, Thursday. Thursday, sorry. Anyway, I want you guys to take three minutes. Completely on your own. Problem number one, show me what you can do. No help from any of the friends. Thank you for listening. No, Alejandro. sure that you know this is separable before you go too far. Salma, you okay there? Okay. Jasmine, is it dy dx equals, is it negative 4xy squared? Yes. Okay. So walking around, just about every buddy multiplied by dx, dy equals negative 4xy squared dx. Mm -hmm. Divide by y squared. So 1 over y squared dy equals negative 4x dx. How many of you guys are there? Okay, good news. You're in the first point. Cassandra, what's the next move? Integrate both sides. And almost always, one side's easier. The easy side here? Right. The right side's easy. Alejandro, what's that going to be? Negative 4 plus 3. I'm sorry, what? Negative 2x squared. Ah, negative 2x squared plus Charlie. So I'm going to say, all right, you integrated correctly and you integrated correctly. This guy's going to be tricky. <laughs> Integral of 1 over y squared. Maybe you've memorized it, or maybe you've got some clever math that you can do. 
Brianna, what are your thoughts here? I uh, changed it to the integral of y to the negative 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 negative. Okay, so integral of y to the negative 2. In the integral of y to the negative 2, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So this is really the same as negative 1 over y equals negative 2x squared plus c. Now, here's the thing. You're not done. You've done all the calculus. It's beautiful. Stay with me just for a second. You've got to solve this problem for y. You've got to get y by itself. And the tricky thing here with the y in the denominator, be a fraction killer. <laughs> what I just said, multiply both sides by y. Because look what happens. If I multiply on the left by y, y times negative 1 over y is negative 1, negative one equals negative 2x <laughs> squared plus c, all that times y. But what I want is y. So then divide by all this stuff over here. So you get that y is going to be negative 1 over negative 2x squared plus c. Tonight's homework, finish it off. There's four more. Yes, I am picking this one up tomorrow for a grade. I want you guys to get some good practice with this. Hello, Anthony. Anthony, you have a charger for me? I know.